Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your fit doc, aka Kristen Simone, and I'm back with your dose of medicine. So today we are going to talk about my GPA, my MCAT. I'm revealing all that to you. I've already revealed my MCAT in a previous video. Make sure you go check that out. But I'm also going to be talking about how I increased my score by seven points from the first time I took the MCAT to my last in absolute time taking the MCAT. So let's hop right into it. Before I move any further, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot. Okay, so I'm going to do my review at the end of the video, but I wanted to talk about how I increased my score seven points um, when retaking this MCAT. It was definitely very hard. I had to have a lot of courage, which I give myself a pat on the back for because that was hard, y'all. Like, who wants to take it twice? You know, who wants to take it once? <laughs> we can be real. Like... It was very nerve-wracking, and I'm not going to lie, y'all, I cried a couple times because it was just, it seemed so impossible at first. Um, if you're anything like me, like, I'm a fast learner, you know? I ask questions. Um, I'm the teacher's pet. <laughs> not really the teacher's pet, but I ask so many questions. I'm always going to go to office hours. I, I pick up on things quick. You know, my GPA, I had a very high GPA, so I'm just like, okay, what is the issue? Like, why can't I get this? MCAT like why is it so hard for me to grasp like even whenever I took the SAT and the GRE I've never been um excellent on those standardized tests but I've always been like above average um now I don't think that I'm like the best test taker in general standardized test taker I don't and I don't know why that is I, I don't know <laughs> but trends show that I'm not the best standardized test taker and I don't think that it correlates with my grades story of my life but I just wonder, like, the MCAT really threw me in for a loop, and it really discouraged me. So, anyways, the first time that I took the exam, I realized that I did not go in-depth with enough content review. Honestly, I was a lost cause at that point. I, I underestimated the amount of information that I needed to know for the exam. The second go-around, this is what increased my score seven points. Two words, content review content review like I felt like I knew so much more content going into the test and I really felt like okay this is what I need to know like put this on a put this on a flash card this is what you need to know and I feel like that is what increased my score seven points is content review I went over um the organic chemistry tutor he has like a he has like a three hour course on general chemistry and it talks about like acids and bases and just different, whole different concepts like Hess's Law and other concepts like that. And I went over that and I went over some other things too, but I feel like that helped tremendously because it really helped me brush up on my general chemistry terms. Um, I le The last time that I took general chemistry, I was a sophomore in college. So I forgot a lot of the trends. Um, I didn't, I couldn't necessarily recall all the trends that I needed to as quickly as I needed for the MCAT. So I really felt like the organic chemistry tutor helped me. Also, of course, if you haven't seen my video about blueprint and how I used that as my second go round test prep. Um, make sure you go watch that video as well. Blueprint did help me with a lot of content review. My tutor, especially my tutor, shout out to Casey, because she really did give me confidence and she let me know the different things that I needed to know for the test. As y'all know, the test can be very extensive. So there were some things that like, I didn't think I needed to know. Like there's no way that I need to know all the enzymes, all the steps, all the products for glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, fatty acid oxidation, um, the electron transport chain. Like I didn't think I needed to know all of those enzymes but you do um you know like it's certain things like that like i just didn't think i needed to know it um i thought that i needed to know an overview but i needed to know everything and so my tutor really helped me figure out what things i needed to go in depth on what things i didn't need to go in depth on because to be honest the mcat consists of so much information it's impossible for you to go in depth into every single thing unless you want to study for like one or two years it's just ridiculous. So she really helped me figure out what was important to know in depth and what wasn't. And I feel like that helped me as well because it helped me, it prevented me from getting overwhelmed with information and it made it realistic for me. So content review is what helped me, you guys. Like that's the only thing that I have for you. I didn't think I needed to know all the physics equations. 
um but i did i needed to know the trends i needed to know the trends on the periodic table i needed to know all of those things and that is what helped me that is really what increased my score so i suggest really getting into those books y'all i suggest buying the official guide to the mcat book i have suggested this in multiple videos I suggest getting that getting that book, y'all, and going through all the terms in that book, making sure that you know those terms front to back. Those terms can be broad, um, so like it may not be super specific, but I would suggest getting like a seven subject review book, whether it be Kaplan or Princeton or whatever, and just using that official guide to the MCAT book and using whatever those terms are in that book and go and reference them in your seven subject reviews to make sure that you know those concepts. Also, in most of the seven subject reviews, it gives you like what information is high yield and what information is low yield. So I would definitely look into the high yield chapters and know everything about the high yield chapters. Know everything. Don't leave anything out. And what another thing that I suggest is um, Anki. <laughs> I know a lot of like med school students talk about Anki. Some med school students don't like it. Some med school students do. But Anki is good um, if you need to know things right off the bat. It's also good for like psych -so terms. So that's a good resource. Also, just like drawing out pathways so you know what it is. You can go back and look at it and you can just like keep redrawing them perhaps. Like if you feel like you really need to know it more and more and more and more and more until you like get it like it's the back of your hand. So definitely drawing out diagrams to pathways which you're going to need to know and um Anki for flashcards if you're a flashcard type person so that is my advice to y'all I wish I could give y'all like some magic magical potion some magical trick you know to to I don't even know I wish I could give y'all some magical trick to like juke out this MCAT or something but like there is no way around it it's content review and if you're a good test taker then we are already halfway there. Um, so that's what helped me. That's what helped me this second go round. I honestly thought I would have received a higher score because I felt like I could take all of my prerequisites all over again and get A's again in them. That's how much I studied. And uh, so I was a little disappointed in my score. I really was hoping for a higher score. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm glad that it's over. I'm glad that I increased seven points. I'm proud of myself for that. And I'm not going to get down on myself for that, you know. I'm going to enjoy this dub because it was a dub. And, um, you know, I'm going to live in it. And I'm going to, it is, it is what it is, you know. I'm not, doing, I'm not taking it again. So, it is what it is. Okay, moving on to the more, I guess, exciting part of this video. I'm going to reveal my, M well, I guess I already told you all my MCAT score. But I'm going to reveal my GPA and i'm also going to reveal my science gpa so for those of you who don't know i graduated from unc charlotte in may of 2019 Woo, go niners um forever a niner i was a student athlete <laughs> was i was a student athlete i ran track at unc charlotte and i graduated in may of 2019 with a bachelor's of science in exercise science and a minor in biology I graduated with a GPA of a 3.78 or 3.8. I like to round it to a 3.8 because like it's basically a 3.8. Anyways, my science GPA was a 3.6. So there wasn't that much of a change in my GPA. After I graduated, I still needed to take three prereqs. So I had to take biochemistry in English class and then um, physics two in the lab. Let me tell y'all about the English class. I really feel like UNCC advisors really need to do better, just a little bit better, because I was told that I only needed to take one English because the English that I took was an upper level English. It was more advanced. It was writing intensive. So I only needed to take one English. But like the other people that were in the other Englishes had to take two because basically like their classes was their classes were like separated. Like the class that I was in was compounded of the one class and the other class if that makes sense so it's supposed to be like a mixture of like the two classes but it's in one because I'm advanced so like the yeah, that was like kind of how it was supposed to go so anyways back whenever I was speaking with my advisor about you know med school and the things that I needed whenever I was a freshman sophomore I was under the assumption that I was fine for English that I was good because I was in an advanced level course and it was an intensive writing course and blah blah blah, blah. but anyways I was told the opposite at the last minute. So I had to take an English course, which I hated, but I got through it and biochemistry in a physics, physics two in the lab. And so after that, my GPA remained at a three, six and um, my MCAT score is a five Oh five. So altogether, my GPA is a three, three, seven, three, eight. 
My size GPA is a 3.6 and my MCAT score is a 505. So that is what I'm applying with. This is what I've already applied with this um, application cycle. And this, this is where we're at, you know. At this point, um, it's in God's hands and I just pray that I choose the best school for me. And um, yeah, as you probably can tell, my GPA doesn't really correlate with my MCAT score. I know that I'm probably not the best standardized test taker. I don't really know why. It is what it is. It is who I am. I'm fine with that. But um, I am aware of that. And it was funny because I actually got asked that question. Um, did I get asked that question? I think I did get asked that question on an interview about like, if I'm aware that my GPA and my MCAT score don't correlate. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. Um, I think he asked me something like that. I don't know. But y'all be prepared to answer questions like that because they're going to try you low key to make sure that you know how to answer the question, to make sure that you know yourself. So just make sure you know yourself. That way somebody doesn't tell you about yourself. Anyways, that was it for this video, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We're a small YouTuber right now, but we are looking to grow and grow and grow. If you felt like this video was helpful or like you felt like this video gave you motivation, feel free to share it, y'all. Share the video. Share the video. Share the video. Um... Thanks again, and I look forward to talking with you guys next time. Bye.